Hello and welcome back to the airport I've been making and compared to the last episode a lot has definitely changed. Well, in the last episode I tried to get explain a few things and get things moving while the off camera I have made this small car park but most of this area is gonna be car park this most likely these two areas. This area is going to be part of this building, which is an, apparently an automobiles um, co company building. I decided to put it here, being the location to the airport. This is Terminal 5, by the way. I did eventually mark out where the terminals are going. <laughs> Main terminals and Terminal 5. There are two more terminals up here, where both going to be cargo. It most likely will be a harbour around the edge. and. But anyway, the other thing I have worked on and been working with people um, who are familiar with bridge making and are really good at city skylines to help me perfect this, so I am really grateful to the community and everyone who I mean, gave everyone a shout out, but that'll be the entire video. <laughs> but yeah. I, can't thank enough for how great the, the community is. They really are nice people. So what I've actually done is, I, when I designed this airport, I had actually designed it mainly for getting the aesthetic design of it, and I didn't really think of how to get here. And eventually, after a long discussion on a bunch of different designs, this is what we, well, what I got up with, and using a couple of good assets like this bridge which is a really awesome asset granted at the moment the pillars keep on resetting so I've had to manually place all the pillars and the actual ones that keep on resetting I've hit under I've just hit them but this bridge the long suspension like bridge with main structural supports on both the airport side and the mainland side, but the mainland side I haven't really done. So this is actually how the junction looks on the airport side. There are two metro rails you can see here, and it splits off at this point on the on the right-bound rail, and yet that will lead to these terminals over here, and then into the main terminals. As well as uh, this line, which only services the airport, so the airport will actually have a, met a metro depot in its encompassing area. Um, down here, we also have a tunnel. You can see that it turns off, and that's really just because. There's actually an underground passage with this train station asset, which is also a heat code, and you can see the shadows and glitching out again. I've been plagued with this frequently. Um, but yeah, you can see there's a tunnel, and anytime I put the tunnel straight ahead, it clipped through this built through the trains, the metro station, and uh, I tried to have any ideas and. Not all of them ended up either realistic or just didn't solve the issue, so I ended up just turning it off and then turning it back through, and, mo and then I moved this metro station to here. I expanded the length of the actual station to be more realistic to this station. And just added a nice planner here and added the car box. Now, most of the car box in this area are going to be short term only as. Oh, no, sorry, these ones are going to be the long term only, where short term, and it, this is again an idea that came from that community, is the short term could be offshore, because this, uh, this is a massive airport, and if you had to have short term and long term parking in one location, the amount, the immense amount of traffic on this bridge, the road design I utilizing just wouldn't be enough. So having it that only short term parking can be here as well as basic service transport we should ease that congestion and what will ease it more is a lot of the 
main services, police, med medical. There are small units located in the airport for short-term relief for all those services, mainly fire and police, but there will also be a medical station located in the airport. Again, this is really because of how isolated the airport is. But anyway, what I want to get up to is I did this uh, terminal off camera and I also revised it a little at this little depot here. Again, really this was just an idea I got off when I, I sometimes go to my local airport to plane spot and um, that there was a taxi shelters located right up against the airport and that's what they are and over here is actually the main taxi depot area and well it's really going to be just a car park for taxis and shelters and stuff but I think it'll work so what I did is I used an asymmetric road and made me the the innermost lane to the taxi line just for taxis and I've set up with traffic presidents and all that and this only can service taxis or emergency vehicles while the middle line services everything else and I'm uh, pretty happy how it turned out I mean I might go around and add some more manholes because it seems to lack them a lot but I don't much know about sewers I also modified this road here so it basically only emergency vehicles can use these in case there's an emergency but generally own, the own mainstream traffic can't use this crossover so I just made it look like a regular road well the best I could I have to have that um, middle section if a car like if an emergency car needs to turn in going this way or turning going that way they can just bypass through that anyway back to on topic I built that terminal like the foyer off camera and I think this one I want to try and do on camera which requires me to actually Remember the distances of all these. Just gonna start out with the pathway I use. And the only reason I use this pathway is because there are actual doors located on the top side. I don't know why there are doors, but there are, so leave that like that, and that's the pavement. Okay. Now, I use a lot of these for the panelling, and I like these because when I've been to a lot of airports, including my own, generally the terminal area has a shelter. And a lot of the more tropical ones are glass based and I really wanted to use those glass base they like glass design in my airport so that's why I'm using these so I'm just gonna place this one like so just move it up and yeah that looks good and just, it's just copy and paste at this point generally when I do stuff like this the reason a lot of it is off camera is because I do experiment and just you know just short of you know making a time lapse um, me experimenting is like hours upon hours of work generally work you never see because if I don't like it like any sane person if you don't like something you don't keep it so 
So there we have that's that's really it. Yeah, that's gosh out there uh, virtually done. I say virtually because um we still actually have to add the cross beams under it that are actually the supports for the balcony. Now if I go over here I'm sure you you can see there are small supports running under it after every two pillars apart from here where it's after these two pillars because this, there has to be a support at the end but that's actually the end of all the two so yeah what I want to do is I actually want to grab this building turn it around and just go over here and position it like so so we get oops so we actually get the lift system I I use in these airports and from here what we can do is we just hide this in the building and that's how I do the transit ways. And honestly, better they are the transit ways, these assets are really a lifesaver when it comes to getting the design done because the transit ways make a more clean look for the building compared to what I originally did, which wasn't short of just being plain ugly and having the transit ways allows me to really play with the design of the building and add more to the build like personality and not have this really ugly ramp that has to go down so you can get up to this second level now how my imagination is is that these are just extensions to the airport and there's an internal staircase. I mean, my airport's kind of similar where there is an upper level but everything's internal and you just enter and exit off the ground floor but if you want to go to departures you've actually got to go up a level. It's a confusing design but when you've been there a lot you get used to it quite, quite easily. So, anyway, the what I actually use for this, the ports of this building are Metro um, bridge supports from the Metro overhaul mod, I think. When I, I literally, I was just searching pillars and I found these, and I just these look cool. I'll give them a try and see how they look. Uh, to be honest, I think they look quite nice. I mean, obviously there's a handful of better pillars, but I think for the aesthetics of this building and all the greens you see around it in these pillars do work. And really, it's, to place these pillars for me is just a lot of this. Because they are a pillar, I can't use the line, the prop line tool because these are not props as far as I'm aware. There might be but every time I click on them the option for the prop line tool does not show. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the direction of the sun. Then you can see some of the beams, how I position them, or a little or really badly off. And yeah, it's a lot of this, and Honestly, it's frustrating as that when it just does not want to 
why not but when it does it looks a lot better huh one sec I'm just gonna check something no these pillars are wide enough so This is going to take a while. I'll most likely perfect the placement of all the off camera because placing them is actually a pain. So, another thing I've noticed with airports is there are a lot of trash cans, or if you're me, they're called the bin. British and what she's gonna do is activate anarchy and I'm just gonna put a few bins down like so. I always put them at the roadside because again it's nothing when I've been at my airport, that's where they were usually located at the roadside and Huh A lot of these are pretty nicely lined up I mean that one's a bit skewed but usually when I'm doing these a lot of it. I mean with the first building there wasn't a single one where that wasn't a problem yeah that's, I think that's more pretty much lined up I mean there might be a bit wavy on that front but yeah what can you do I'm, I'm not perfect but you can get pretty close now, off camera I did these and basically they're just benches with a couple of planters in the middle. I used the same pink tree I used in these bus stands that I did eventually expand. Again, off camera. I'm pretty way good at working off camera than I am on. But anyway, when it comes to the actual this for the foyer of the airport, this site is also done off from might add a couple of decorations inside, but when I actually looked at my my airport, most of them, the what I call the foyer section, which is basically the area in front of the door in, for this airport, is it's pretty much blank because that's where the most of the traffic in and out of the airport is. So having it blank, it's safer. Now with that. That's pretty much done, and I'm pretty happy with that. So anyway, I want to move over to here, this taxiway, and switch to night. Well, mm, pretty dark. Go like so, and you can see. No, I'll go full on night. But you can see I have added some taxiway lights and some taxiway markers, so. When I did the last episode, I got these moderately wrong. I've said that red ones are for taxi, for runways only, yellow ones were for directions, and black ones are for taxiways only. Uh, that's actually untrue. Red ones are mandatory signs. And from what I have read about mandatory signs is, it is, that's what you have to do is like over here is it says 1331 so you the mandatory sign here is is that you hold short 1331 the black sign is your location with the yellow text the black sign the yellow text is your location but the majority used for taxiways there are a couple for runways but the majority taxiways 
Now you can see here, this one's a red mandatory sign and it's pointing in that direction. Generally, from what I've seen with airports in real life, red, red is also used for directing to the runway. In this case, I'm using the same layout as that 13 to 31, so up down here is 13, up here is 31, and you go that way and you can access the runway. Which you can also see I've now added all the lights apart from the red lights on 1331 and 27 left, 9 right. Now you can see with 9 right that there are no touchdown guidance lights. This is because this is a lot smaller of a runway compared to the other two and was only designed for regional aircraft. When I've actually looked on the airport design I use for what I've been using, this one might only actually have the touchdown marking. It doesn't actually have any of the markings, but for my case, well, this speaks out a little. I have added white lines on either side, but I've only added the touchdown marking. I've not added the um, threshold markings or the distance markings, just the touchdown. Then again, I think this is a touchdown guidance, and this is the touchdown markers, and that's the threshold. And so this does actually have a threshold, but it doesn't have the, these markers. It only has them, just this marker, if you get on your knee. But I have added the same lighting system for approach lighting and an ILS system. Since all the other runways in this airport have one, and from what I can tell, this runway does also have one, it seemed quite stupid not to have one. Now I am thinking about moving this eventually, but it affects the threshold and I don't particularly want to affect the threshold. Also, based on real life, the guidance, the taxiway here uh, supposedly does start in about here. Granted, granted, yes, I have had to make some changes and adjustments, so. This is like you meant to start about here, but because of that making an adjustment to this runway and this one, this is actually in the proper location, the runway is just larger. I've also added these over here, which is, these are stands, and these are actual administration or um, schooling or headquarter buildings for, say, airliners, headquarters, administration of the airport, or flight school training and I imagine this is going to be a flight school one so I might get a couple of like training things like I might get a one of these or in a larger plane and put it over here and or about here and that would be a test plane for fire crews get a couple of Cessnas which I have now got assets for and place them around this area I mean, building this, it probably took me about 10 minutes and it shouldn't have. But it shows because it does take a while to position everything correctly and when I built this one originally it took me a day to build just that. What I built in about 10 minutes. So another thing I want to do is I want to expand over here on taxiways E and G2 and particularly at what I want to do is just start marking out the um, taxiway edge markings and uh, then Really, when all the markings are done, I may start adding all the lights. But what I want to really show is how long getting these on takes. And these take a lot. I think the just lining up the edging and the tack and the taxiway center line 
This probably took me longer than most of this apple. Now, here is evidence that I don't actually use the airports, like the in-game airport designs for taxiway lineups. I have made very much a lot of suggestions that I have never once believed that the lining was correct, and I still don't believe the lines are correct. I believe really that these taxiway lines require planes to do to be able to achieve much tighter turns that are simply possible. With an airport, the actual line should m softly mirror the line of the outer edge because that's actually the turning rate of a plane. And the outer edge is just to tell the plane you, your tires can't cross this. That's really about it, and really I am not happy with this section, it's... ...really tight in terms of how much room I have for making the turn, and... You can see the sheer difference in what the what the game says is a valid turn and what I think is a valid turn, and even that I don't think is valid. And that's what I find annoying about the in-game airports is I do still think that the in-game Airports, particularly the lines that planes are supposed to be taking for a turn, are still way too tight and aren't possible. I mean, I mean, I'm not an expert on aircraft or anything like that, but. I have seen planes take turns, and they do take very wide berths when it comes to their turn. Now, when I do the lighting on the room on the taxiway here, is I will actually angle it with this taxiway here. It's not actually going to match up at all with this line because this line is just showing the edge of this. It isn't actually showing the edge of the taxiway. It's actually showing the edge of this terminal, but it's also showing the usable amount of space a plane can use if it was to over turn for a taxiway as long as it's not a plane here to get back to the line. Now you can also see I've started adding the like gui center line guidance lights which only light up when they're on power which is Kind of annoying, but I have tested it with fake power supplies and stuff like that, and they do look really nice. Now, and they are correct in the terms of guidance, because when you're getting a plane that there are various different light codes you can use, like yellow is for be aware for uncommon aircraft or hold short or etc. Here one side is green, the other side is yellow, the green side is facing towards the runway so if the plane was coming in it knows oh I can just turn it off while on this side it's saying hold short, be cautious etc. Now normally this would be red if you can't progress from what I've seen with runways but there is no red markers and there's no plane landing. I didn't really plan for this airport to be functional, I just wanted it to look good and accurate. 
But I'm really happy how it's turning out. Granted, it's taking forever, and uh, this is the third episode. Now, I have to apologize. This is meant to be the fourth, but the third or uh, recorded everything but the actual visuals, which means it didn't really record anything at all, apart from me talking to myself, which looks really awkward. But, yeah. Getting there, I think in the next one I will try and progress the series with more something that I don't particularly like anymore, which are time lapses. But at this point, it's going to take me ages to produce, to make progress and produce content on this nature, which isn't exactly fun content, it's actually quite boring. And I can probably see why you probably don't like the content. Because I'm generally just talking and nothing more. But anyway, I have run out of time for now. I'm possibly going to look at the means of showing this airport off. Even if it means if I want to sort out streaming, I will. Even though I don't particularly want to. It means I've got to sort out other things and means I've got to draw some more. Like, I've been behind on my... channel art for a few months now. I've actually got the, a bit of it done, it's just... It's not finished. But, anyway, if you've enjoyed, um, for whatever reason, then uh, do hit the like button. I do appreciate it. Leave a comment, especially if you've got any advice for me, or you're one of the people that actually gave me advice in the community, which, to be honest, I think most of you. <laughs> Yeah, and additionally, if you want to see this more of the content, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you're notified when I release more videos on this. I'm particularly going to do more of this than really anything else because I really want to progress this and hopefully start the interesting stuff over here with the actual city and not being stuck doing an airport. Though, Honestly, I think the airport is going to take most of the beginning episodes of the series. But anyway, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed and bye bye.